Hi and welcome to this video about the Verges Planchard Indispensable. Very quickly let's go over the build as there really isn't much to it. First we have these little screws that hold in place this kind of blade. And then we have this brass body with the name of the tool. It really looks nice. I'm not entirely sure how they do this but I would guess that they just extrude a brass rectangle like this cut the ends and then polish this little chamfer a bit more on this side to give it this tapered shape. So here we can still see some cutting marks, same on the other side. It could be a negative for the build quality but I think it kind of adds character to this knife because you really feel how robust and foolproof this knife is. There is really not much details, kind of feels even like you know a prehistoric tool as it's really really basic. So that's the thing I really like about this kind of tools is that they feel really rustic. I mean if you drop this nothing would happen. A really basic system with these two screws to hold the blade in place. When you're sharpening the blade of course it's going to wear down so you just have to undo the screws, give a little push down here, tighten the screws back and you're ready to go to a new leather working project. For the weight in hand this also feels great as the body of the tool is slim you really feel how perpendicular this blade is or isn't to your cutting surface. That's it for the appearance of the tool. Now let's go to a more practical side. So the blade it's bad. I mean first you really need to take time to sharpen it perfectly. Here it's really bad short finish as I sharpened it with a grinding station so it takes time to sharpen this type of blade and once you have sharpened it it won't last for very long. Maybe a few projects and then you have to resharpen it. So that's why they give you so much extra blade and for a professional use uh, the blade could be improved but if you are just a hobbyist like me and want to do some leather working projects once in a while this blade is good enough. Every few projects just sharpen it quickly and it's good to go. Another thing that's a bit of a negative about this knife is that because it's made of brass here as you can see it's shiny because I just polished it before filming. If we turn to the other side, here's the texture that will occur normally when you don't use the blade for a long time and it has time to develop some oxide layer on top. No big deal, we can take this polishing cloth and give it a new shine. But yeah, it's one of those tools that you need to maintain if you want them to look nice for a long time. Also this thing is a fingerprint magnet as you can see here. So yeah, kind of uh, like an iPhone. Looks great but you have to clean it uh, so it's not like a mess of fingerprints. Now to finish let's quickly make some cuts in some leather. So. This is some 1.5 mm leather. You have to make a few passes before it cuts. Also let's try a freehand real quick. So as I said before, because this body is so uh, nice and flat, you really have a lot more control over which direction the blade is tilting. And again, had to make a few passes, but the cut itself is okay. Let's try it quickly with uh, this type of blade for a comparison. This is almost brand new. So already, because the blade is so much thinner, the cut, as you can see, is much cleaner. But at the same time, you have to make a lot more passes because, well, you don't have the weight of the tool helping you. And here we go. Overall the quality of the cut was much worse than with this blade but it looks cool so there's that.